in the office, I've been seeing a lot of issues with these GLP ones, the glucagon like peptide one receptor agonist drugs like familiar names will be Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro. What's happening is these drugs are so expensive that insurance companies, whether they're private or publicly funded um, insurance payers, they're changing their policies capriciously. It, it, so the first of the year, uh, a lot of things changed. Patients were blindsided because all of a sudden their um, employer-based health insurance or their Medicare, whatever it was, they suddenly weren't getting their Wagovi covered anymore. Each insurance policy has a different take and it's, it's changing rapidly. I have several patients in this situation. They're, they're scared because actually the GLP-1 was helping them with weight loss and it's what they were depending on to be to, to improve their health as they see it. And then all of a sudden they don't think they can access the drug. What are your thoughts? Oh my. Welcome to the 21st century. Yeah, yeah, my surprise to hear this, my shock to hear this. Uh, uh, when I first read that insurance companies were going to cover these GLP-1 drugs uh, for diabetes, well, okay, fair enough. It can truly help someone with diabetes. Uh, uh, okay. But then when the demand was so great and there's so much money to be made, is well, we'll cover for weight loss as well. Well, the floodgates, uh, the, the dam breaks at that point. And I'm saying, you know, at $1,000 a month per person, and we're talking about millions and millions of people on these drugs because every other American is obese. Uh, this is non-sustainable. Uh, this is uh, they can't possibly keep up with this uh, money drain. Uh, and of course, uh, eventually, people are blowing the whistles. The employers, the insurance companies, the government programs. The events of this that this is non-sustainable. Financially, I can understand it. But from the physician's point of view, from the medical point of view, what do we do at this point? We've got a lot of distressed people who do have, they lost you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds on these drugs. They're feeling better. And some of their numbers are better. Their blood sugars are better. Their cholesterol is better. They're reading articles that it lowers their risk for heart attacks and strokes. And they want to stay on the medications. So what do we do? It puts us at this crossroad here. We got something's got to give. If they're going to stop paying for it, then that drug is going to go away for many people. So what's what's a reasonable approach to this? Well, a, a couple of things here. Um, again, the people who say I lost all this weight, and and if I stop taking this drug, I'm going to put it right back on. That's right. If you keep go, if you go back to continue eating the same foods that made you obese to begin with, if that steady standard American dietary stream of burgers and buffalo wings and fried chicken and pizzas and baked goods and cola drinks, if that river of hyper the calories go in constantly, yes, rip, you're gonna blow right back up again. But that doesn't have to be the case, and I think it should, that should not be the case. And I think that if you're going to be using these drugs, and they are a powerful tool, I'm not 100% against them, but I think the context is really important. When I give the, the prescription of these medications, I say, listen, this is, this is a six-month prescription, and it's going to stop at the end of six months. But during those six months, you are going to learn how to eat a diet of whole plant foods predominantly. Uh, and you're going to be filling your belly up with, with uh, soups and salads and steamed veggies and curries and chilies and, and uh, lentil stews and, and no cheese burritos and no oil stir fries. There's a world of healthy plant-based cuisines waiting for you that will trim that weight off you. And it's a matter of learning how to make these, these soups and keep a salad in the fridge, etc. Uh, and it's time to, to healthy up your diet is what this lesson is about. So when you do stop the drug, that weight loss will continue and you can keep on with all this wonderful eating. So 
the GLP-1 prescription. One should be time limited and two should go in tandem with learning how you know to evolve your diet to a plant-based, a plant-predominant one. Doesn't mean you can never have a piece of meat again, but the majority of those meals going down your gullet, well, all of them should be whole food plant-based. If you want to add a little piece of flesh once or twice a week, that's up to you. But it's the whole food plant-based food stream that will really take the weight off in a healthy manner, not forcing it down with these drugs. So that's, you know, the context of how I think they should be used. Well, now reality steam rolls in saying, well, you're going to get, we're going to be stopping those drugs one way or the other uh, when we stop paying for them. So it's a great opportunity, the truth is, for people to learn how to get healthy. So when they come off the drugs, they, yay, they stay, keep, they stay continuing to get healthier. And so the doctors have to be a utility infielder here to pick up the ground ball and throw it to first when, when, the, when the money stops there. Yes, but you can continue with the, with the health benefits that you were gaining off the drug. You can do it with a healthy plant-based diet. And this is where a food coach would come in. This is where online food lessons, this is where the jump starts would come in. There's so many great programs, Forks Over Knives, uh, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine, the uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, Plant Strong. There's so many good jumpstart programs. This is the time to, for the doctor to say, here, here's a prescription. I want you to do one of these jumpstart programs. If, if the drug is stopping in, in a month, let's get you ready for that. Now we could turn crisis into opportunity. People like to have agency over their health, right? They don't want to depend on the latest pill. Um, some of them do, and sometimes it's the lesser evil if they're at risk at baseline. But People want to be empowered. They want to find success making lifestyle changes. I think our, the medical community needs to adequately educate people on the risks and benefits when we start a new drug. I think sometimes we're probably not sufficient in going through all the things that can go wrong in terms of adverse effects to GLP-1s, but also these logistical realities that the, the, the policies are really dynamic and your insurance policy could stop covering this tomorrow. And then what are we going to do? We need a backup plan. We, we want to build your resilience. Because remember that GLP-1s basically suppress your appetite, right? They promote satiety. So a lot of people experience that and they just eat less of the same stuff, but they're not learning to eat differently. So then you go off the drug and per the, the, the company's own clinical trials, we know that when someone stops a GLP-1 receptor agonist, they rapidly regain the weight. It's likely because they, they you know, they weren't learning the habit. So you're, you're just going to eat more of the same stuff, um, the same pattern, the same body uh, it got you to where you needed to start the drug six months, 12 months earlier. I feel badly for, for my patients in this situation. January 1st really messed with people with the insurance changes. Um, and my my goal is to get them uh, more self sufficient. Partner with them to you know bring on their 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 potential, their best health. That's the position you ought to be playing. That's excellent. Good for you. Getting our baseball analogy in early because people, you should never consider these drugs lifetime medication. Well, I'm going to be on Wigovi, Wigovi the rest of my life. No, you're not. It's a stress to your physiology. It's uh, it's it's really an unnatural. The hormonal wrench that uh, is being turned there. Uh, it's a it's a temporary aid, and so don't feel distressed that if you have to get off of it. It's, it's actually a good thing, but it's a great opportunity to learn how to eat healthy. So uh, let's learn how to eat healthy.